Hey gang, how you doing? Uh, me again. Okay, so this video we're going to talk about muzzle velocity. Um, this is going to be important for every single team, I think. Um, in most cases, actually. There might be a few instances where you won't use this. However, most teams are going to be deployed from either the orbiter, the balloon, or the lander. And um, that deployment is going to be an event where you're forced out. And so this is what I'm talking about, where you're going to be forced out of the orbiter, the balloon, or the lander. Um, and so, uh, in a nutshell, this, the physics behind this is the same physics that, they, that you use for a, a potato gun or a t-shirt cannon or anything like that. But in this case, uh, we're going to talk about this physics um, in relationship to your payload being deployed. I'm going to make certain assumptions. We'll talk about those along the way, too. So, um, without further ado, um, so you can follow along. Sorry, you can follow along on page 64 in your Inspires notebook. Um, it's this page right here. And uh, I'm just going to basically talk through the page, and you guys can uh, follow along, make notes, or whatever. Um, okay, so. Any team that deploys and that is forced out of a vehicle, whether it's the orbiter, the uh, balloon, or the lander, can have the same physics. So let's draw a, a simple deployment mechanism. So a very simple deployment mechanism would be, I'm just going to draw this as a, as a tube, essentially. And it's, you know, it's 2D. I can't draw 3D. I can hardly draw 2D. So here's my, here's my tube, OK? And then for the purposes of this, we're going to have our, our payload, our is going to be a sphere, so I'm just going to draw it as a circle. It's got a mass of little m, whatever your mass is, and um, it's going to go, our barrel has a certain length of d that we're going to be deployed from. And uh, pop quiz, what is the maximum distance that your barrel can be? What is your maximum d? Right, exactly right. It is uh, it's about 44 centimeters because it's the maximum dimension of the box. If you wanted to get crafty and, and creative, you could go at a diagonal. I don't, I don't know what that dimension is, but um, basically you're looking at the maximum length of the box that you're in, the box of paper. It's 44 centimeters. Most times I just estimate that the uh, maximum length is 40 centimeters because it's 0.4 meters. Makes the math easier. So we're going to be, uh, because you can't deploy from zero, you have to deploy from a certain distance anyway. So. Um, Anyway, so, the, so, so you have a distance over which your, your projectile is going to accelerate. Um, and uh, so we have an initial velocity for our, what's our initial velocity for our probe? Right. I it was a trick question. The initial velocity, velocity initial is zero. And then velocity final. That's what we're looking for. Okay. So um, the uh, governing equation for this is basically v final squared equals v initial squared plus 2ad. Um, and like I just said, v initial is 0. v final is what we're looking for. Uh, 2 is the number 2. To, uh, it works out well. d is the distance here. And a is the acceleration that our probe experiences as it goes down our tube. OK? So, um, we don't know what A is. We don't know what B final is either. So we got to find one of these two. We got to find A. So, um, so what else do we know about uh, masses and acceleration? We know that when a mass is accelerated, it is accelerated because of a force, right? We know that F equals m a Newton's one. You know, one of Newton's laws. Forgot which one. But force is mass times acceleration. We have our mass. Acceleration is what we're looking for. So it's our mass goes from zero to a final velocity, so we know it's being accelerated, so, it, so it's being accelerated by a force. What's providing our force in our case? Right, the pressure. <laughs> the pressure from, most of y'all will be deployed from you know, using a gas, uh, like helium. That's what we talked about this already. If you're using a spring or something like that, it's still the same sort of force that deploys it. It's just a different way to calculate that force. But we're just going to call it um, a pressure right now. So uh, if it's a gas pressure, we're going to say that, that, that that's what forces our probe out the end of the barrel. Um, we also need to know that this is a three-dimensional uh, barrel. The barrel has a cross-sectional area. And again, a cross-sectional area, if, if you think of the barrel as, you know, as this marker, the cross-sectional area is just the circle that is the, um, you know, the, you know, that is the butt end of the barrel here, assuming a constant size. Cross-sectional area is just if you were to cut it in half, what's the area right there? 
So that's our cross-sectional area is A. I'm kind of drawing it. I'm trying to draw it like it's a three-dimensional thing. Please excuse my drawing. It's in the it's in the book the same way too. Anyway, so our pressure forces our mass, and it's got an area over which it forces. So, do any of y'all know what a pressure is? You know, y'all know what the units of pressure are? Right, pounds per square inch, psi. You know, you look at it for tires. Uh, so pounds per square inch, pounds, which is a force divided by square inch, which is an area. So a pressure is a force over an area. So it's a force divided by our, our cross-sectional area. Let's rearrange this equation here so we get a force is a pressure times an area. Everybody follow so far? There's just a little bit of algebra there. And so the force that is making our mass accelerate is the same force we're getting from this pressure over the area. So we just set these two equal to each other. So we take, uh, so these two F's are equal. So, so we have MA equals PA. Now if we square this, we get mama equals papa. But that has nothing to do with what we're doing right now. It's just funny. And anyway, so um, maybe it's not funny. I don't know. It's a tough room. And uh, so, but this, we can solve for, what we can do is we can solve for acceleration. Acceleration is pressure times the area over the mass, okay? So we just solve for acceleration. So now this equation becomes, doo -doo -doo -doo, over here, V final squared equals V initial squared, which we already said was zero, plus uh, two times our, our acceleration is now PA over M, pressure times our area over our mass times the distance that we're traveling. Um, so, and these are things now that you can plug in. These are design things. You, you can dial in a pressure, you can assume a pressure if you don't, even, if you don't know the pressure yet. If you, can, you can search for a pressure if you set this up in Excel. You, um, the diameter or the uh, cross-sectional area of your barrel is gonna be similar to the, the, you know, the, 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 the size of your probe. You get the mass of your probe and the distance that the probe travels. So you should be able to solve for your final velocity as it exits the barrel, as it exits the vehicle in that case. Um, now, I said in the beginning that, we're, that I'm gonna make some assumptions. There's a lot of assumptions that I made in this, uh, this little thing right here, and the assumptions are very important, okay? Number one, um, and the assumptions are on your sheet of paper if you wanna follow along. Uh, number one, uh, and probably the most important one, is uh, as this mass travels down the barrel, what's gonna to happen to this pressure? Right, this pressure is gonna drop. If you, un, unless you're constantly feeding gas into it, if you just put a puff of gas in there to start your barrel up, to, you know, to start your, your probe moving, as the probe moves down the barrel, the pressure back here is gonna fall. That just makes sense, right? Um, so, uh, but this equation, I've got pressure as a constant. Pressure is not changing as we go down the barrel, okay? Because that, that's, that's tough. That's like calculus at that point. We don't wanna do that. So. Um, so the, we have a constant pressure is what we're assuming. And, and again, um, constant pressure. And again, this is on the sheet of paper. Um, if, if the barrel is not too terribly long and 0.4, or you know, less than half a meter is not that long, and if your pressure is a decent amount, then having a constant pressure is not a bad assumption, really. It just makes the math easier. And this is what I would do, actually, for a first cut anyway, when I was calculating this for real. Um, the next one, the next assumption that we have, also very important, is uh, the interface between your, your probe and the wall of your barrel, it's, it's, uh, there's gonna be some friction there, right? And um, there's, there's gotta be some friction there. It's gonna touch the barrel wall at some point. But we've assumed, we, we've got nothing that talks about friction in our equations, do we? So we're assuming no friction. This is common in engineering, so don't worry about that. Um, but just remember that no friction we're assuming no friction. The third one we're assuming is um, also related to the, this interface between the, the barrel wall and your probe. Uh, in reality, especially if we assume no friction, there, uh, some of the gas would escape around the probe and it would you know, do something like this. Some of the gas would, would come around and it would do curly things, you know, weird stuff like that. You've seen it on TV or in movies and stuff. Um, some of the gas would get in front of the probe. And what that would do is actually would create a back pressure. 
Um, so, some, so some of the pressure, some of the gas would escape and actually go faster than, the, than our mass and get up here and it would create a back pressure. Um, but we're assuming what I call a perfect fit so that no gas actually, no gas gets in front of the probe and um, to nothing disrupts its, its flight down the tube. So it's a perfect fit is what I call it. Um, but that's what that means the, by, by perfect fit is that, uh, yeah, okay, we've got no friction and no gaskets around the, the, the probe. That's a little bit of a stretch, but we're still in okay territory, I think. And then of course, um, in this scenario, it's a short distance. We've just, we've, we've, we've just neglected gravity. Um, we've, we've just forgotten about gravity for a little while because there's no, the, the only force that we're experiencing is due to the, is, is, is due to the pressure here. There's no gravity pulling us down, which depending on how we were shot, uh, gravity may or may not be important in this case but uh, we're just going to assume it away for right now for the brief moment in time that we're in that barrel. So uh, Inspires is not a, a, a competition of who can do the best modeling. It's a, it's a competition of, of who can explain their payload the best and who can understand what their payload, what happens to the payload the best. And so these, these assumptions are okay to make. Um, any assumptions are okay to make as long as you understand what the assumptions do and as long as you understand um, uh, how the assumptions impact the problem. So in all four cases, one, two, three, four, actually the, the fourth one, maybe not, the, the, the fourth one depends on which way you're shooting. But in the top three cases, what this really means is, okay, if, if we were to have, if, if the pressure were to drop as the ball went down as our ball, as our, as our probe goes down our barrel, what would really happen to this final velocity? Right, it would decrease. Final velocity would decrease. You like how I paused and wait for you all to answer? Um, final velocity would decrease because the pressure would decrease as the, ball, uh, you know, as the probe gets further and further down the barrel. So the final velocity would be a little bit less than what we calculated here with this one. What if we had friction in the barrel? Friction, y'all know friction, right? It, it's gonna act in the opposite direction as we're traveling. So friction would also result in a lower velocity. Uh, if we had a back pressure, if we didn't have a perfect fit, if we had gas that escaped in front again and created a back pressure, um, basically the gas would impede the, the, the uh, flight of our probe down the barrel. Again, that would also result in a little bit of lower pressure. So you add these three together and your velocity is going to be a little bit less than what we calculated. But that's okay. I still think we're within 80 or 90% of you know, the, the value. And again, um, it's, 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 not, it's not a game of who can come up with the best Excel or MATLAB model or something like that. It's a... It's who understands the problem the best. So when you present this, you need to make sure that you state that, yeah, we made lots of assumptions. We assumed constant pressure, no friction, perfect fit, stuff like that. We neglected gravity um, uh, while it was in the barrel. So uh, I'm gonna do an example here in just a minute, just to show you how this works. But I just wanted to make sure you understood these assumptions. I'm gonna use the same assumptions in the example as well. Hey, wow, look at that. Our example showed up on the board. I don't know how that happened. Um, so, Again, um, I'm going to go over an example for the muzzle velocity equation, page 64 in your book. You can follow along, basically. This is a simple example. Um, so we have a, a pressure that is pushing on our mass, our probe, and the probe is going to be accelerated down a barrel and uh, a certain distance, and it's going to exit with a, a final velocity there at the end of the barrel. Um, it's got, and, and the distance that it's going is, you know, uh, I chose... So basically, let's look at the parameters. Uh, the pressure, I just said we're going to do 1,000 PSI. Just, you know, it's just a guess, really, or just a, an example, anyway, so it doesn't matter. 1,000 PSI. You guys can have up to 4,500 PSI as your maximum pressure. But don't forget to convert to Pascals, okay? You can do this in Google. Type in 1,000 PSI equals question marks, equals question mark, space, P, Big, big P, little A, and Google will tell you the value in Pascals, okay? There's no reason to mess this up. Google will tell you the answer, okay? Um, make sure you use Pascals because we're going to keep everything in kilograms, meters, and seconds, and that's what a Pascal basically is. It's in kilograms, meters, and seconds. So um, the mass, it's a quarter kilogram. That's what? That's a pound. Um, is that right? It's a pound. Uh, and uh, half pound. Half pound, sorry. 
So, it's a, so our mass is a half pound. The distance that we're traveling down the barrel is 0.4, is a 40 centimeters, which is almost our maximum distance. So again, to convert to meters, make sure you convert to meters, it's 0.4 meters. Our barrel diameter is five centimeters. It's about this, about this big around. Um, so what is that? That's a little bit bigger than a baseball. Um, convert that to area. We need a cross-sectional area. So the diameter is five centimeters. The area is 0 0.002 meters. Make sure your area is in meters. So convert this to meters when you calculate it. Um, and so that's our cross-sectional area. And again, from if, if you remember from earlier, uh, V final equals V initial squared, V final squared equals V initial squared. Again, we're starting at rest. With respect to the barrel, the probe is at rest. Again, the, the entire ship is moving, but with respect to the barrel, the, um, it's at rest. So it's zero um, plus two times A, our acceleration is um, pressure times the cross-sectional area over M times the distance that we're traveling. And so uh, we plug in the values for this and we're gonna get our final velocity. You can take the square root of it. Our final velocity is, PJ's off camera, he's dying right now. Sorry about that. Um, our final velocity is 208 <laughs> meters per second. If I have to leave and go do the Heimlich on PJ, just don't worry about it. Um, 208 meters per second. So you can check your, your uh, your mathematical model. When I say model, I, I don't mean CAD model, I mean mathematical model, like something you make in Excel or MATLAB or something like that. Even even by you know doing something by hand, it's still a math model. But um, so, so when I refer to a model, in these cases, I'm referring to the mathematical model that you use to calculate this with. So um, for this example, I got 208 meters per second leaving the barrel at that. That's pretty quick. Um, you might want to go back and check the acceleration on that. Um, Say, okay, if you were to go from a certain, you know, if you were to go from zero to 200 meters per second and 0.4 meter distance, how much acceleration does your, does your probe feel? Can your probe tolerate that kind of acceleration? That's something you should know as well. Um, <coughs> anyway, uh, thanks a so bunch. Talk to you later.